Hi, I'm Joe Keller, and welcome to the Mosaic Church in the Nazarene. I pray that all of you are doing well. well. Pastor Rex will be sharing our Sunday morning message titled, Live in Unity. But first, let's join together in singing some praise songs. Well, I found a friend, oh, such a friend, he made my heart his own. God himself is with me and I know I'm never alone. I know all my tomorrows I'll be better than my hopes. We got love, praise, peace, and power and joy the Holy Ghost. Now help me fly. You help me in the chorus. We've got love, my God is never wrong. He takes time for me. We've got grace that's blue upon my dreams. Set the sinner free. We've got peace that's fire and burning. We'll never run and try. We've got power over fear and death. Hearts to love and joy. The Holy Spirit fills me up and
exalted forever exalted and I will praise his name is the Lord forever his truth shall reign heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name is exalted the king is exalted on Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, the ever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord forever. His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy.
some of you know what General Assembly is in the Church of the Nazarene. It is the quadrennial gathering of the Church of the Nazarene globally. It last happened in 2017 in Indianapolis, Indiana. More than 40,000 Nazarenes from all over the world came together. As of 2021, the Church of the Nazarene is now in 164 world areas or countries and a total membership of 2,666,845. That's how we uh, grow in the Church of the Nazarene since 1908 when we were uh, officially uh, organized. General Assembly is a time for inspiration, business, and mission strategy, but even more than that, it's a church reunion. The hallways of the convention center were filled with people joyfully renewing acquaintances from the past and making new ones. The General Assembly should be held in 2021, but because of COVID-19, it was postponed. So the next General Assembly will be next year in June 9 to 16, 23. You just imagine people from all over the world seeing the Lord and uh, enjoying the fellowship with one another in many languages. Many languages. Those 164 world areas or countries represents about 100 languages all in all. And they try to praise the Lord together during the General Assembly. Personally, I like to observe people. When I have to wait in airports or malls, I like to watch the people go by. I will have to say, hmm, that guy. Okay. It's amazing how diverse we are, and yet, at the same time, how similar we are. Whatever color or of skin you have, the language you speak, or the culture you came from, all of us are part of humanity. Those of you who hold annual or occasional family reunion have looked at your extended family and thought to yourself, I can't believe I am part of this family. It could be said out of joy, or it could be said out of disappointment. It is your family. You don't have much choice about it. You are born into it. I sometimes have similar thoughts about church family. In our case, our local congregation we call Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. Sometimes I just wonder, how in the world did I get hooked up with this group like this? Uh-huh, yep. Don't you ever think that, too? We have a lot of similarities because we have a common faith. But other than that, there is an awful lot that makes us different from each other. There's really no reason that we should come together like this. The common factor of our coming together is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus Christ, we are brothers and sisters, and we are a family. And thank you for considering me as your brother in the Lord and accepting me in uh, this society, in this community. I am a brother to you even when I drive you crazy. You are my brothers and sisters even when you drive me crazy. The moment we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we become a member of the body of believers called the church. Just like any family, some are kind of cranky. Others are kind of boring. Some are just plain weird. But we are brothers and sisters. If God is your father, then you are my brother. You are my sister. The next question is, how am I going to live in this church family? How am I going to act in this church family? That question 
You have a choice. You can pretend that the family doesn't exist. You don't go to church, and no church attendance at all for you. Or you can make occasional visits like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, weddings, and maybe funerals, especially your own funeral. You should be there. <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke. You should laugh. Okay? <laughs> Some would never dream of living. They just make the others wish they would. Some think that quarreling and complaining is their God-ordained manner of being in the family. And some determine to find out what God has in mind for them and what he wants to teach them by placing them in this family called the church. Psalm 133 said, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard. I'm growing my beard right now. I'm trying to. Some of you are ahead of me. <laughs> running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Psalm 133 has only three verses, and so that's it. And maybe you will say, what are you going to preach about Psalm 133, Pastor? <laughs> Psalm 133 is a description of what we are trying to accomplish in the church. The joy and blessing of learning what it means to live together in unity. This psalm was sung by a group of people who were traveling together. They were on their way up to Jerusalem. And on this trip, they realized that one of their blessings is that they were on a journey together. I'm trying to emphasize that word, together. The same is true with our Christian life, you and me, or any Christian here on earth. We are on a journey Together, It is not good to have to travel alone. I, I'm seeing your Facebook uh, post, and you want to travel with your family, with friends, and you want to enjoy camping with them, uh, you want to enjoy fishing with them, you want to enjoy just around the campfire with them. A family, you are on a journey together. You are traveling together. And it is not good to just travel alone. It's boring to travel alone. You must be traveling with someone. And that is life. We are on a journey together. We really do need each other. That's why God put us together because he knows that we should not attempt to make this journey solo. So the worshipers going towards the temple in Jerusalem sing, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. But you will say, Pastor, families fight. The first story of brothers in the Bible is the story of Cain and Abel, a murder story. It is not just an ordinary fight. It is a religious fight. Why are you blessed and I'm not? Why is your sacrifice by God and my sacrifice is not? So it's not just a brotherly fight. It is a religious fight. A disagreement over worship styles. Are we going to sing just hymns or contemporary songs? Or are we going to put a curtains on those windows or not? What color? Uh, brown? Hey, I like that. My favorite color is brown. Uh, no, pink. Ah, and then one of you. Then this, there's, there are disagreements and conflict. And then there's Joseph and his brothers. They sold him as a slave to Egypt because children are often so full of their own needs and ones that they look at a sibling as a competitor and not an ally. 
Ooh, there's another one. David and his brothers. Remember, David went to give provision for his brothers doing battle with the Philistines. They said, what are you doing here, shepherd boy? You should go back home to the ship that smells like you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to paraphrase what, what happened in that story. And remember, even Jesus and his brothers, Jesus was teaching in a house, and then his brothers and mom were outside before they became believers of Jesus Christ. They tried to take him away from the crowd because they said, he's a little bit crazy. Families fight. If there's one pork chop on the plate and two brothers who want it, you better watch out. The floor will be flying. It, in reality, it's easier to do almost anything else than what Psalm 133 is calling us to do, isn't it? We are being called to live together in unity as God's people, not only by this psalm, but by the whole of Scripture. We are to live together as a family under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We are to live in what? In unity. We are called to live in so the next question we asked earlier uh, the question we asked earlier is how am I going to live in this church family as a church family how am I going to act this psalm gives us two pictures that define the unity that the psalmist is talking about the first is found in verse 2 precious oil poured on the head running down on Aaron's beard. This is from Exodus chapter 29. Where instructions are given for the of That is Moses' brother and the other priest. After sacrifices were prepared, Aaron was dressed in priestly robes. Then this instruction was given, you shall take the anointing oil it on his head and anoint him. Oil is a sign of God's presence. It is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. When the people saw the oil of anointing flowing over the head of Aaron, they knew that Aaron was their priest. This is the one that God has chosen to intercede his grace to them. In the New Testament, as a result of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we are part of the priesthood of all believers. Jesus makes us priests for one another. Let's read a little bit of that one in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, all the way to 5, and then verse 9. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, by chosen by God and precious to him. Verse 5, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen people. Verse 9, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Israel was called God's chosen people in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, believers are designated as the chosen people of God. You and I are the chosen people of God. We are all priests of each other. So that living together in unity means I am willing to see anointing oil of God's spirit flow through. It means that I am willing to accept you as priest, one who intercedes the blessings of God to me, and one who represents Jesus Christ to me. Unity comes when I am willing to receive God's blessing from you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. 
The second picture is in verse. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Mount Zion, or Mount Hermon, is the highest mountain in that part of the world. It rises above 9,000 feet. Mount Zion is Jerusalem. The elevation of Jerusalem is about 5,000 feet. Where my wife, a pearl, grew up in the Philippines, the elevation is above 7,000 feet. At those elevations, the morning air, the morning dew, is fresh and clean. We lived there for many years. We farmed potatoes, cabbages, carrots, and I remember waking up in the morning, breathing the fresh morning air. <sighs> Feels so good. It's refreshing not only to the body, but also to the soul. If you have ever experienced those kinds of morning, there's a sense of freshness and a clean anticipation of a new day. That freshness of the morning dew is an often used picture of the hope and expectation that new things are ahead for us. Things look better in the morning. That is why I like to read the Bible and have my devotion and pray in the morning. It's just like fresh air in the morning that good not only for the body, for your mental health, and for your soul as well. In our relationship as a church family, we will not lose the expectation that God is at work among us. Just like the morning dew in a higher elevation of our relationship with God, it's always fresh and clean. As a church family, we see each other with that kind of expectation. We want to see what God is doing in the life of our brothers, in the life of our sisters in the Lord. We want to see how God is blessing you. We want to hear, me as your pastor, I want to hear how God is blessing you. How God has blessed Brother Phil West, that he is here with us today. I'm excited to listen to those stories. It's just like dew of Mount Hermon, a higher elevation and the freshness and cleanness is flowing down to Mount Zion. We too are blessed to see members of our church family receiving new and fresh blessings from the Lord. The Apostle Paul and Jesus made unity an important part of a church family. Let's listen to what Paul says in Paul writing in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, all the way to verse 4. He said, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So there is no disparity. There is no favoritism in God. What blessing you receive, I receive. And so we can share with one another, like that fresh air from Mount Hermon flowing down to Mount Zion. And then Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, verses 20 to 23. Jesus in his prayer said, my prayer is not for them alone, for his disciples. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one Father, just as you and are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. 
I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. If you listen carefully to those words that Jesus used in his prayer, the Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ are one. And he wants us to be one as well with them. Not only one among us as brothers and sisters in the Lord, but one with Jesus Christ and the Father. There's no question about what Jesus prayed for. He wants us to live in unity just as God, the Father, and also the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are also in unity. There is a promise in the last verse of our psalm, in Psalm 133, verse 3. The promise is this. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life <clears throat> forevermore. There the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Unity brings the blessing of eternal life. So how are you acting? Well, how are you acting in your families? And how are you acting or living in a family called with the church, our church family? May we be a blessing to one another like that anointing oil flowing down, blessing you, like that fresh air from Mount Hermon going down to Mount Zion, bless Mount Zion with it. May we become truly a blessing to one another. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity of just listening to Psalm 133, listening to your word, because we believe that the Bible is your word. And thank you, Father, that as you speak to us, continue to speak even when we are no longer here in this sanctuary, but out there where it matters most to be with others, enjoying the company of brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all God. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee. Exalt thee, O Lord. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O Lord. Will you please stand with us and let's sing this song one more time? For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. 
Thou art exalted far above all gods. We exalt Thee, we exalt Thee, we exalt Thee. be upon you give you Thank you, Pastor X, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our Sunday morning worship. If you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button. If you have not done so, also, please click on the notification bell to be notified of our future videos. We would appreciate your donations or offerings to, our, to support our ministry. 
please send them to Mosaic Church of Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morse, Michigan, uh, 48458. Or you can also send it through our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com backslash mosaic nas. If you're in a reasonable distance from us, we'd like to invite you, your family, and friends at our next worship service. You'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway. Each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., we pray that the Lord would bless you so that you will then become a blessing to others.